Welcome to the Soul of Islam radio podcast with Ahmed Saqamini and Emil Ehsan Alexander Turabi. The Islamic Renaissance is here and now. May the peace, the mercy, the blessings, and the light of the divine be upon you all. My name is Ahmed and I'm a researcher in atomic molecular optical physics, a spoken word artist and deeply committed to sharing the fundamental connection between science and spirituality with our community and beyond. Ihsan is a lifelong student of Islamic spirituality and the founder and creator of the highly acclaimed Islamic Meditation and Eternal Warrior Way programs. He is a spiritual coach, writer, and speaker committed to the evolution of consciousness within the global community. The Soul of Islam radio podcast is dedicated to sharing the deeper dimension of Islam and supporting your personal growth and spiritual development. Today's podcast is on sensitivity and awareness. It is very crucial for a seeker, a walker on the path back to the divine presence to get an understanding of what sensitivity and awareness are. And of course, joining me to discuss the nature and reality of sensitivity and awareness is my brother, Ihsan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Ahmed and to everybody out there throughout the world tuning in to Soul of Islam Radio. Inshallah, you're having a blessed day or evening wherever you are sensitivity and awareness it may sound like an unusual subject for us to be going to but it is actually a subject of extreme importance particularly now and today awareness it's a subject about a capacity that we need to become more aware of within the muslim community pun intended in fact the development of awareness is a core aspect of islam when we look at the three stages of Islam, Islam, Iman, Ihsan, we see a progressive development towards increasingly subtle realms and levels of awareness. With Islam, we are dealing primarily with the physical dimension. It's the material dimension. It's what's hard and tangible. With Iman, now we're dealing with the mental aspect. And this is more subtle, less tangible. Yet with Ihsan, we are dealing with what is spiritual, the spiritual dimension. And this is purely energetic. As one progresses from Islam to Iman to Ihsan, from being simply a Muslim to becoming a Mu'min, and then ultimately, inshallah, a Muhsin, there is a progressive development of awareness and sensitivity to increasingly subtle experiences and effects. Ihsan is the state of God consciousness. It's divine consciousness. It's a state of presence, a state of awareness of the presence of Allah, and thus a state of pure awareness of all things. It's a state of heightened awareness of where a human being is in this moment in time and space, and even beyond time and space. And as one becomes more subtle in nature, he or she becomes increasingly aware and sensitive to everything. With the development of awareness and the development of sensitivity, the gateway of perception expands. Now, all of creation is moving back to its source. It's being brought back, pulled back towards its divine destiny and the divine presence of Allah Almighty, the eternal source. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in giving a meaning to creation that I was a hidden treasure and wanted to be found, so I created. I wanted to be known, so I created. All of life, the universe, evolution serves this purpose. It's the awakening of the individual and the development of greater awareness and consciousness. Now, there's a growing phenomena of individuals who are extremely sensitive, who are now termed hypersensitive. In fact, there's a new term that's been used to describe this, hypersensitive personalities. And this refers to individuals who are extremely sensitive to energies, to people, to places, to foods, to smells, to environments, to everything. Now, although this can be seen as a handicap, because one is easily affected by one's environment. In fact, it's a gift. Sensitivity and awareness are a gift from Allah to accelerate the process of awakening and evolution. And it's imperative now to learn and immerse oneself in that which will support health, wellness, and strength, and to live in the light. 
you know, increasing sensitivity now necessitates this. Hypersensitive individuals can no longer tolerate negativity, for example, which is essentially a paradigm in which the presence of Allah is either absent or misunderstood. If you are listening to this program, if you've attracted this type of content into your consciousness, you've either pulled or being pulled to this type of material, you know, if you're part of this audience, then you're likely part of the population that has an increased level of sensitivity and awareness than many others. Otherwise, you'd probably be listening to something else. You'd probably simply be, you know, enjoying some sort of entertainment. But, but you, your soul, is seeking to awaken rather than to remain asleep. And for you, the time is now. And if you are suffering from the negative consequences of your increased sensitivity, then this is a wake-up call to start developing spiritually and personally. Because discomfort and crisis necessitates growth and development and evolution. Truth is ever to be found in the simplicity and not in the multiplicity and confusion of things. Those are the words of the father of classical mechanics, the physicist Isaac Newton. And subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspires whom he wills to deliver a message. The only requirement is that we seek. Now the essence of truth points towards simplicity. And simplicity can be reached by reduction. Everything that we know, or there is to know, can ultimately be reduced down to fundamental truths. Truths that are timeless. Not because they are timeless, but because of the reality that those truths are reflecting. Now, there is truth in saying that there are infinite ways or paths to walk. And this is a truth that can be accepted and believed but not fully understood. Because it is impossible for one soul to walk the infinite number of ways or paths. And the human mind is limited when it comes to conceptualizing infinity. However, in, in seeking simplicity by power of reduction, one can arrive at a quantum truth that the mind can receive and understand. And the truth is, is that the infinite number of ways can be reduced down to only two. There are only two ways to walk. The spiritual way and the secular way. The way of the divine and the way of the world. The way of reality and the way of illusion. Now, when we hear the concept of walking in Islamic spirituality, it is usually attached to one of those two ways, the spiritual way. However, it is important to note that everyone, every soul, is walking and returning back to the divine, irregardless of the path or the way that is chosen. Now, upon our arrival, what will be apparently different between souls in that reality is how and what each soul will manifest in that presence. Every soul will manifest its actions there, and every action is a reflection of a step on a path. Now, because of this simple, profound, and quantum truth, it is crucial to know and understand the very important aspects of walking, and those are sensitivity and awareness which are qualities or states of being. Now, just like any concepts, the manifestations of sensitivity and awareness are dependent on the chosen path or way. And a step cannot be taken without sensitivity and awareness. MashaAllah, so you talk about the path and walking. And of course, walking means moving towards a goal. It means it implies development. It implies growth. It implies movement towards our goal. And again, going back to the understanding that movement towards our goal is movement towards awareness. It's movement towards awakening, towards enlightenment, towards awakening in the divine presence of Allah. Walking the path, developing spiritually really is about developing maturity. It's about becoming more mature. And really awareness or the development of awareness is the development of maturity. Most human beings live and most life forms most creatures live in very unconscious states but with the development of consciousness comes the development of awareness 
If we look at children, for example, there's very little awareness. Yes, they're in the moment, but they are unconscious. They're unconsciously in the moment. And many times, in many ways, a child is in a state of bliss and peace, but unconsciously so. There's very little awareness or consciousness of it. Yet with growth and maturity, consciousness arises. And unfortunately, as part of that path, presence is lost. Yet with the development of consciousness, the individual is still unaware, still lacking real awareness or a level of awareness. There is awareness, there's increased awareness, but deeper and more profound states of awareness are still lacking. It can be said that the individual is still asleep, you know, living essentially in the world of form, in the world of illusion, what uh, in other traditions is called maya, the, the world of sleep and dreams. And this is the densest level of existence for awareness to be limited to but the purely material and physical plane. Unfortunately, some or many never truly mature beyond this base level of awareness, and they remain trapped in what is essentially ego consciousness, consciousness that is limited to the material and physical plane. This is what uh, I refer to in some of my work and programs as level one and level two state consciousness, which correlate to what is mentioned in the Quran as nafs al-amara and nafs al in which life is primarily merely about survival. It's driven purely by lower needs and desires, physical and psychological. Really, it comes down to the satiation of appetites, physical as well as psychological. At these levels of consciousness, indulgence in food, substances, entertainment, unconscious social activity, and the like tend to define the individual's experience. Spiritually speaking, this is still a level of immaturity in the human being. I'll give you a story to help uh, explain or demonstrate. There was once a sheikh, a great sheikh, who was taking a walk with some of his disciples and students through a cemetery. And as he was passing by the graves and looking at the stones, so-and-so who was buried there um, at the age of 70, 80, 90, he would walk by these graves and say out loud, poor child. This poor child died when he was just a baby. He would pass by another grave of some woman that had died at the age of 60, 70, 80, and say, ah, poor, poor soul, didn't live a full life, died as a teenager, and so on. He would keep making these comments as he passes through the cemetery. Later, his students asked him, Yashik, we were a bit confused because uh, these stones said that this person died at 70, at 80, at 90, but yet you, you were referring to them as but children and adolescents. And then the sheikh said, by the standards of the world, yes, they were old. They had developed, they were old, they had gone through the natural life cycle. But by the vision that we have, they were still children, still immature. They never developed, they never flowered, they never blossomed into their true potential. So they died essentially immature and as children, still unconscious, still heedless, still asleep. And spiritually speaking, you know, this type of immaturity or lack of spiritual development is indicative of us as human beings, if we have not progressed beyond what is essentially primitive and base animal nature, there is a greater possibility. And uh, in my work, I refer this, and in some of my programs and work, I refer to this as level three state consciousness, which is referred to in the Quran as nafsul mutma'inna, the peaceful, contented, certain, awakened self. At this stage, at level three state consciousness, or at nafsul mutma'inna, where consciousness is really awakened and evolved, we are no longer living from the body and its physical needs for food, for procreation, for rest. We're no longer living from the mind and its psychological needs and dependencies such as for approval and validation. But now we become governed and inspired and living from the heart. And now we are sustained by spiritual sustenance, by light, by ibadah. Allah Almighty says in the Holy Quran, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Wa ma khalakna jinni wal insi illa li abudun that we have verily, we have created the jinn and mankind, but for worship, meaning that the purpose of our creation and what truly sustains us is the light of ibadah. That is what our souls are sustained by. Now, ibadah is a connection to Allah Almighty and to the divine presence. And it's that which truly sustains the self and nourishes your being. At this stage of development or awakening, at this stage of awareness, connection, spiritual development, there's less of physical and psychological sustenance required. 
and these actually begin to become detrimental to one's being. By becoming more subtle, by increasingly becoming more subtle, your being will begin to have greater difficulty absorbing and processing density. You become more dependent upon spiritual energy, on living on light energy. And if you look at the stories and the lives of human beings that had great spiritual development, they ate very little, they slept very little, yet they were more vibrant, more alive than everybody around them. And I've witnessed this myself. Divine love then becomes the most essential source of energy for the human being. And this is our potential. This is what we were created for. You know, subhanAllah. So hence, it becomes extremely important if you are on the spiritual path or if you're developing even beyond your conscious will into increasing levels of sensitivity and awareness, it's extremely important to be mindful of your lifestyle, your choices, your environments, your associations, everything that affects you. For example, food, it becomes increasingly important to consume food closest to its natural state and with the least amount of levels removed from light energy from the sun, what can be called sun food. And we're talking about plants, fruits, vegetables in their most natural states. These become increasingly required to nourish and sustain the subtle body. Maybe you can think of this like a high-performance engine. You know, the basic car can run on any type of gas, but once an engine has been developed and evolved to be of high performance, it can only run on the finest gasoline. It can only run on the best quality fuel. And if you put lower level grade fuels, it will actually damage the engine. In many ways, many of us, many human beings are now becoming so hypersensitive and their bodies are becoming more subtle, their beings are becoming more subtle, that they require much more pure foods and fuels for their system. They require more light and less density. And hence, processed foods and the typical unhealthy junk foods that are available in the modern diet begin to take a massive toll on your system. We must remember that we, by Allah's will, are continually evolving and continually changing. And now, at an accelerated rate, we are not the same physically as even the previous generation. And the lifestyle choices, the diet and relationships and so on of our parents and grandparents may very well kill us. We can't make the same choices. We can't survive on the same sustenance. We can't survive in the same environments. We are becoming way too sensitive. We have to adapt. We have to recognize this and evolve. And we must become more aware and more intelligent. And the need for awakening and developing awareness becomes much more imperative with each successive generation. Collectively, as a species, we must be moving towards the divine presence and toward divine potential. And now the consequences of unconsciousness or the lack of awareness is far greater than they were for your parents for the previous generation. Life, the river, is moving forward. And we must learn to flow with it and become aware because its speed is increasing. And what was a fairly comfortable ride for your parents will be a thrashing experience for us. You know, simply put, we simply can't afford to remain unconscious and unaware. We must learn to effectively use our free will and make intelligent choices, true choices. We must learn to live from conscious choice rather than unconsciousness and un unawareness. For such will destroy our health, our relationships, even our careers and businesses. All of life is now necessitating the development of awareness and consciousness. We simply cannot be happy otherwise. We must learn how to choose happiness. We must learn how to choose peace. We must learn how to choose prosperity. We must learn how to choose paradise. Your life is a reflection of your choices thus far. So look at the results. And my humble suggestion is to take responsibility as a mature, as a mature person would rather than blame or play the role of a victim. Only thus do you get empowered and learn to choose better while you still have time. And unless you're dead, you still have time. Even then there is mercy, although it will be much more difficult then. Allah has given you life today and is still giving you time and opportunity. And you will be amazed at how fast positive change can take place even if you live the lifetime in ignorance and unconsciousness. So again, if you are a person that can now relate to becoming increasingly sensitive, increasingly aware. Number one, this is a wake-up call to support your growth in ways that will enable you to live a healthy and successful lifestyle and one that is in alignment with divine purpose, one that is moving you towards the ultimate divine destiny and goal for which Allah created us. And secondly, this development of sensitivity and awareness is critical within our path within Islam. 
we can no longer as a community or as a people or as individuals remain dense, unconscious, unaware of ourselves, of our thoughts, of our actions, of the most subtle levels of our being. Because we affect our environments, we affect everyone around us. And we're affected by our environments and everything and everyone around us. Only when human beings become aware and sensitive enough can we truly live responsibly and contribute to the health, happiness, wellness, wholeness, the light and the love of our entire world, our planet, our environments, our homes, our relationships, our families. Only when we're aware enough can we avoid unconsciously hurting ourselves and others around us. SubhanAllah, the, the truth, so profound in the ayah that you mentioned earlier, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created jinn and ins, but to worship. And what's so profound about that, that even though us as Muslims, when we reflect upon this ayah, the meaning that we can draw from it is that we were created to worship Allah, but he doesn't even mention his name after the word Ya'budun. And we were programmed, Allah programmed us because we as human beings are not capable of doing anything. Nothing comes from ourselves. Every path has been created. Every possibility has been created. The only thing that Allah has entrusted us with is the power of choice. We make the choice and we watch the path unravel right before us. And because of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He programmed us to worship and He oriented our beings, our spirits to His way right when we came into this world. And it is just a by a matter of choice that we choose the path of this world, the path of illusion, the secular way. And if we look at the secular way, the way of the world and illusion, we see that sensitivity is associated with the tendency to become upset about things that are done to, are said about, or relate to the individual. It is the capacity at which the mind reacts and responds to certain events. Now, sensitivity is dependent upon the nature of the path. And the secular way, the way of the world and illusion, at its essence, is a way of selfishness. Let's make that clear. The way of the world and illusion, at its essence, is a way of selfishness. A way that revolves around the self and feeding its wants. Sure, there are degrees of selfishness, but that doesn't change the fact that selfishness is attached and associated with the world, with this dunya. And selfishness affects how sensitivity manifests itself. And it does so by pointing it back to the individual, pointing it back to the self. And in that state of being, the mind, the self, becomes sensitive only to events that threaten its state, its wants, its desires, and so forth. The self, which is of the illusion, wants to constantly align itself with the illusion, the dunya, the world, hence why it chooses the path of the world. And a self that is perfectly aligned with the world is the furthest point from the reality, from the divine. We seek refuge in Allah from such a state. Now, when it comes to awareness, the self that has established a bond with the world is only aware of what the world can offer and transmit through the doors of passions and desires. And because of this, the individual begins to descend into lower degrees of egoism. As a result, the awareness of what is real and what truly matters begins to diminish with lower and lower degrees. An egocentric being becomes aware of his or her wants more than the needs of others. For example, in, in a husband-wife relationship, if one of the partners is an egocentric individual, the relationship becomes difficult to manage especially if the other partner is trying his or her best to be in line with the divine 
And such relationships are prone to misunderstandings, miscommunication, disrespect, fights, and are a cause of pain, extreme pain to the heart. The same thing applies to individuals in a family, a community, or even a workplace. An egocentric being is totally unaware of the needs and emotions of others in many of the settings they find themselves in. And this egoic phenomena becomes much more amplified in the presence of people with lower states of consciousness. So although that we might think that one who is following the path of dunya, the path of this world, we might think of them as individuals who lack sensitivity and awareness, but in reality they also have access to those tools. It is only the direction of sensitivity and awareness. Where is it pointing to? And someone who has built a relationship with the world, their sensitivity and awareness is ultimately pointing back towards themselves. SubhanAllah, Ahmed, thank you for making that connection. I would say that the degree of awareness equals the degree of presence, which equals the degree of development. It's the degree or the level of one's transcendence and really the degree of one's level of selflessness. And this is what leads to peace. This is what leads to paradise. Unconsciousness can be equated to a lack of spirituality. It is materialism. It is superficiality. And this leads to suffering. This is a world based in drama. And at its extreme, it's an experience of pure hell. Selfishness equals suffering. I'm just going to repeat that. Selfishness equals suffering. And suffering equals or is a result of selfishness, self-centeredness self-absorption, narcissism. You know, unfortunately, our contemporary culture cultivates selfishness and self-centeredness, self-absorption, narcissism. It's all about me. Me, me, me. Nafsi, nafsi. And what do the Prophet ﷺ say? Human beings will be running to and fro on Yom al Qiyamah on the day of resurrection, screaming out, nafsi, nafsi. Myself, myself. Because they spent their entire lives absorbed in selfishness, in the self. But then there will be those who will be present, illuminated beings of light, standing and sitting on pulpits of light, they who did not live for themselves, but who lived for something far greater, for truth, for reality, they who transcended ego consciousness. As awareness increases, and as development increases, presence increases. One becomes more selfless, because in the present moment, in the here and now, there is no past, there is no future, and there is no self. In the pure present moment, there is no ego. There can be no ego. Ego can only exist in past and future. It draws its story from the past, or perpetuates its illusion and fantasy of itself into the future. But in the pure present moment, there is no conscious ego. There can be no egoism. Spiritual development then becomes equated with the development of presence, the transcendence of self. And really it's ultimately about transcendence of time. And all of that energy that is devoted to protecting the self constantly against perceived fears and threats becomes liberated to experience life in the here and now. All of that energy becomes free to become aware of what's happening right here, right now, and to the miracle of life in every moment to the extraordinary nature of every single moment, filled with awe and wonder. All spirituality, all spiritual practice, all spiritual development is to help lead a human being to this type of development, to the development of awareness and awakening. And sensitivity is a tool that life, the universe, Allah Almighty is using to drive us towards greater levels of awareness and awakening. Because if you are suffering from the effects and the consequences of being increasingly sensitive, it forces you to take closer and closer looks at what is affecting you. It forces you to become more aware. It forces us down the spiritual path. So this is actually for us, for everybody out there, a reminder and a wake-up call that we can walk the spiritual path towards greater levels of development and awareness consciously and by choice now. We need not be driven 
by pain and suffering, but by consciously choosing spiritual development, spirituality, the cultivation of greater levels of awareness of self, we can minimize the level of suffering and pain it takes to awaken. This is what's possible now. We are at a point in our collective evolution where we can consciously choose to awaken and evolve. We've been given that gift, and in fact, we must choose it. There is a greater possibility available for every human being than what is currently being experienced by life on this planet. There's something far greater than this life of drama and problems and negativity and conflict and violence and fear. There is the possibility of peace. There is the possibility of something far greater and far more beautiful. The reason with which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created creation and said, I know what you know not, speaking to the angels that there is a greater possibility that will be realized, must be realized on this planet. But we must choose. Life is now forcing us to choose. We're at the fork in the road, collectively and individually. We have to make a choice between the unconscious life and culture that we've experienced thus far or something better. We're at that fork in the road. We must choose between eternity and reality and truth or illusion and density and materialism. Spirituality is the only way forward. We can no longer afford to live life on this planet unconscious, ignorant, and unaware. We must develop, we must evolve spiritually, individually and collectively, or our lives and our collective world will collapse. My humble suggestion, take proactive steps before you're forced down the path to awakening and minimize the amount of suffering and chaos and conflict and pain in your life. Be proactive. Awaken Awaken for prayer, for meditation, for study, for learning, for knowledge. Tune into things that will support your soul's growth, that will support your personal development. Minimize the useless and completely non-beneficial, mind-numbing entertainment that we're constantly inundated with. Tune out from the messages that the materialist world keeps bombarding us with. We live in a world, unfortunately, a materialist world, that profits off of our fear and our unconsciousness, that profits off of our addictions, but it doesn't serve us, it doesn't serve you. And to continually be tuned in and plugged into this world leads to pain and suffering, it leads to drama, it leads to failure, it leads to a life far from your divine potential and far from the peace, the prosperity, the heavenly life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for you. Choose spirituality. Choose growth, choose awakening, choose development. Immerse yourself in that reality. Because in reality, that is the only reality. Everything else is illusion. And it will pass, and it will fade, and it will die. Invest yourself, your being, in that which is eternal. Invest yourself in that which will not fade. Invest yourself in your soul's development, in your soul's light, in your soul's evolution, in your soul's sustenance. Develop to the point that ibadah becomes what you look forward to. Like the Prophet of Allah Wasallam, and his companions and their companions, they lived for ibadah. It wasn't a distraction. It wasn't an obligation. It was their refuge. It was their rest. It is what gave them strength and sustenance. Everything else was a distraction. They looked forward to prayer. Learn to connect with the Divine Presence of Allah. Connect with a lineage that can draw light and sustenance and spirituality from the heart of the Prophet Wasallam and which will sustain and nourish you and your soul. The Great Divide has emerged. And right now, we as souls have been given the choice. Which way do we want to walk? Which way do we want to live? Which path do we want to see unfold? You know, just look around. Just look around. Look at our human, our collective consciousness. Look at our state. Look at the violence, the chaos, look at the hate. And there is a call. There is a call. It is loud and clear. Not because the call is getting louder, but Allah has allowed for an opening, an opening of awareness of this possibility. Alhamdulillah, we've mentioned a few times, and you've probably heard this from other places or from other sources, that there is a potential within you, within each and every human being. But we need to ask ourselves, why is our himma so weak? Where is the motivation to find the truth, to seek it, to be it? 
Why is it that when we hear that there is a possibility, a reality out there waiting for us, why do we not run towards it? This is where belief comes in. This is where action comes in. This is where prayer comes in. Ask. If you sincerely ask for Allah's guidance, subhanAllah, He will deliver. Spirituality is the way. Spirituality is the way. And if we look at the spiritual way, the awakened way of living in this world, the way of reality, the way of the divine, we see that it is a path that is concerned with liberating the individual from the shackles of the self. It is a path that involves remembrance. And the highest degree on such a path is where constant remembrance of the divine is made with every step of the journey. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who can attain higher and higher degrees and states of consciousness. Allahumma ameen. Ameen. When the human mind becomes more controlled, subdued, and aligned with the divine frequency, we see a huge transformation in the human soul. Now, as many of you know, my background is in in physics, and I feel like the best way to think about this is to imagine matter. And let's say it's metal, for example, and within this piece of metal, this metal fundamentally is made up of atoms. And each atom has a cloud of electrons, and these electrons are orbiting, making tawaf around the nucleus constantly. And these electrons carry charge. And an electron that carries charge and is moving generates something called a magnetic field. So imagine this. You have a piece of metal with billions and billions of atoms with clouds of electrons moving around their nuclei. And each electron is generating its own magnetic field. SubhanAllah, an interesting phenomena can happen in certain metals if they go through a certain process. If, for example we were to imagine one atom with its collective magnetic field, it is going to point in a particular direction. And if we were to imagine every single atom with its own magnetic field, each one pointing in a different direction, it seems chaotic. There's no order. There's no structure. But what would happen if we were to align every atom's magnetic field and point it towards their same direction what we see is the collective magnetic field of this piece of metal becomes amplified every atom's magnetic field aligns itself with its neighbor really aligning itself with the direction and what we see this piece of metal turns into something that we call a magnet that is why we have permanent magnets because every atom its magnetic field is aligned in the same direction Now let's take this inside, internally, into the soul, the spirit. Now now let's take this inside, into the mind, the self. Now our self has so many aspects. And the self, the ego, has its way. Once you think you've arrived, it's hiding somewhere else. It's always a few steps ahead of you. And because we have so many aspects to the self, imagine every aspect to yourself as one of those atoms. Just like the atoms generating their own magnetic field, this aspect of yourself has its own wants. It wants to be fed from this world. And each aspect is saying, me, 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 feed me. But what if each aspect of yourself was aligned? was aligned. Now, if we looked at the example of atoms, you can point the atoms in any direction. As long as they're all aligned in the same direction, you're going to get a magnet. But spiritually speaking, there's only one real direction. If every aspect of yourself, of your being, was completely aligned, perfectly aligned towards the right direction, the direction of the divine, of Allah, of spirituality, of love, only then that you can begin to develop something called awareness. Awareness kicks in. 
you begin to ascend into higher and higher degrees of awareness and sensitivity, not of yourself, but of your spirit, the spirit that was blown inside your heart, inside your soul, the reason why your heart is beating. You become aware of your nature, of your real essence. You become aware of your surroundings. You look at nature and you could almost feel the essence of the trees. You become more aware that everything but you is aligned with the divine frequency. The divine way, the way of reality, the way back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a path of selflessness. You have to abandon yourself and don't attach yourself to the path either because with every step reality you're abandoning the path itself the path is only there to take you back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make sure you choose the right path the spiritual path because either way like we said we as souls are all going back to Allah how do we want to manifest in that reality Every action is imprinted, is engraved in our souls, in our beings. And from our souls, we will see our actions manifest in front of Allah. And only then we will start saying things like, Nefsi, Nefsi. It will be a, such a shock to witness this reality, this truth that we all saw, that we were all part of once in that pre-eternal world before we came here. You know, the Qur'an is so descriptive. We will not even concern ourselves with our parents or our children or our siblings on that plane of resurrection because the reality is so intense the truth is so intense that the only thing that we are concerned of on that plane is to save our souls because only there that we will see the reality of what we have done in this world in this physical plane you know if we don't feel it yet we need to believe that Allah is calling and he always has been is just allowed for an opening of awareness. It is because of this mercy, because of this love, that He has given us a choice and a clear sign in which way to go. SubhanAllah, the path of spirituality, like you mentioned, Ahmed, is really the path of becoming whole. It's about becoming complete and one within yourself, unifying your being becoming a unified force. Spirituality is about healing that fragmentation. So there's a few things that I'd just like to maybe end with, and just to kind of summarize some of these points, some of the things that we've talked about thus far. Number one, increasing sensitivity is a result of the will of Allah Almighty, and it is the way of the universe so as to increase our level of awareness. I'll repeat that. The increasing sensitivity that you may be experiencing is there to help develop your level of awareness. You can facilitate this process by consciously choosing to develop, consciously choosing spiritual progress and spiritual development, by consciously choosing spiritual practice that will cultivate greater levels of awareness. And in fact, there really is no choice. Secondly, spirituality will accelerate this process. It will actually make you more sensitive and more aware. And practices such as meditation and dhikr will increase your sensitivity and awareness. They will also give you the capacity to deal with this increased sensitivity and awareness. So I would also suggest as you begin, or if you've already been on spiritual development and the spiritual path and spiritual practice, take it slow. Don't overdo it too fast. Much like exercise. You wouldn't go into the gym and instantly start to bench press, you know, two or three hundred pounds. You'd probably pull a muscle. So don't overdo spiritual practice. Develop your capacity to progressively. Start slow. Otherwise, you may go too fast and actually, you know, become too sensitive too fast without the capacity to handle it. And third, knowledge and learning and support is essential for you. You're on a path that not everybody else is on. In fact, probably many of the people you're around are not on the same path, are not being driven down the same path. So you need to start to plug into individuals, communities, circles, associations, 
knowledge, learning, environments that will support you in your growth and your learning and in your spirituality. This is one of the main reasons why I created you know, the Islamic Meditation Program and the Eternal Warrior Way Program. And the Eternal Warrior Way Program specifically is designed to help rediscover the way of the spiritual warrior and to develop the character, the constitution, and the culture of a warrior of peace and light. It's to help balance one's path in energy. And with increasing sensitivity and awareness, we must concurrently develop strength, fortitude, and resilience. We must develop spiritual strength. We go into much greater detail and lots of tools and techniques and how to become in the Internal Warrior Way program. We go into much greater detail as well as provide lots of tools and techniques on how to become more aware and conscious enough to live with increased sensitivity and to learn how to live from a place of power, choice, divine purpose, and to be in alignment with divine will. Of course, you can learn more at www.eternalwarriorway.com. In summary, sensitivity and awareness are a gift. Don't see it as a curse. It's there to help you grow, and it's a tool that Allah Almighty gave you to help navigate the way home. When doing a little bit of research on hypersensitivity, I came across an interesting analogy, and that was regarding the rose, the flower, the rose bush. I found that, and the rose is always connotated with spirituality. My sheikh always used to put a rose in his turban, and later I began to actually understand some of the deeper reasons for that. The rose has always been symbolic of the scent of paradise, the scent of spirituality. And in vineyards, they often plant rose bushes because the rose is so sensitive to its environment that it will first become affected by any disease in the environment. And that way, if they catch it in time, they could hopefully save the rest of the crop, the vineyards, from being destroyed or from becoming sick. In the same way, if you find yourself to be of increased sensitivity, your nature is like that of a rose, a subtle and beautiful flower from a transcendent place that smells of the scent of paradise. Honor your being and honor your character, honor your nature, and support yourself with spiritual awareness, understanding, knowledge, learning, and practice. And only thus can you truly flower and blossom into the beautiful and radiant being that Allah Almighty created you to be. You were not made for this world of density and form. You were not made for this temporary, transient, temporal, material life. You were made for something far greater. It's time to begin realizing your divine potential. It's time to become who you truly are beyond this world of form and illusion, beyond time, beyond space, beyond temporal identity. Begin connecting with eternity, with the divine presence. Begin rediscovering who you truly are. So sensitivity and awareness, there are qualities and states that are given to every human soul. But the direction of these qualities depends on which path the soul chooses. And the choice is simple. There are two ways. There is a path of selfishness where the ego becomes sensitive and aware of the illusion aware of its wants its desires and its passions where it reaches a point where it worships itself and then there's the path of selflessness a path where the spirit where a connection is made with the spirit with the ruh that allah has blown and it is a path of constant remembrance, a path of wisdom, a path of love, a path of connection with the light of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the divine presence. It is a path of sensitivity and awareness of reality and its essence and the essence of who you really are. Thank you, Ahmad, and thank you everybody out there for listening and for tuning in. May Allah Almighty inspire our hearts and our souls to follow the light that leads back to his divine presence, that leads back to the love and connection to his holy prophet, Sayyidina Muhammad wasallam. that leads back to spirituality, spiritual development, and to what we were created for. Inshallah, may he, subhanahu wa ta'ala, make us Ahlul Akhirah instead of Ahlul Dunya. May he, Almighty, make us 
people of eternity rather than people of this temporary world of illusion and form and selfishness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lead us to our divine potential and to the progressive realization of His divine attributes, His divine qualities of love, mercy, kindness, forgiveness, purity, transcendence, and excellence. Inshallah, may we walk in the footsteps of the Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the path of selflessness, the path of service, the path of light, the path and way of love. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Endless peace and blessings and light on the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his companions, their companions, his family, and upon all believers, and upon creation, until the Day of Judgment. May Allah inspire us all to live united and sincerely and truly in a way that is befitting of the honor with which He created us as deputies of His eternal divine presence. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salamun ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah Allahumma ameen Allahumma ameen This brings us to the end of this episode Alhamdulillah wa shukrulillah A special thanks to all of the listeners from all over the world We sincerely thank you for tuning in and for continuing to support the Soul of Islam radio Thank you for all of your heartfelt messages and your comments and your posts and shares of our episodes on Facebook and all of the other social media services out there. May Allah bless you and reward you on your path back to the Divine Presence. To continue supporting the Soul of Islam Radio, we highly recommend that you do the following. Please uh, like our page on facebook.com forward slash Soul of Islam Radio. Make sure to subscribe and we highly recommend that you use iTunes. Uh, Please give us a review and a rating in iTunes or any service that you may come across. And of course, recommend to your family and friends. Now, if you haven't done so, please check our updated website. It is soulofislamradio.com. There you will find a free multimedia course to help you rediscover the spiritual dimension of Islam. There you'll find subscription links to services such as iTunes, TuneIn, and Stitcher. Uh, You'll also find links to our personal blogs and social media profiles, and a form for you, the listeners, to send us feedback and or suggestions for future episodes. To help you acquire a state of stillness and meditation and help you in state of constant remembrance of dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, We here at the Soul of Islam Radio highly recommend that you visit islamicmeditation.com. And a great tool to help you on your path, the spiritual path, the path of reality, the path of remembrance, the path of love and light. A great tool would be the Eternal Warrior Way program. Please visit eternalwarriorway.com. Inshallah, if you feel inspired to continue supporting the Soul of Islam Radio even more, you can make a donation on our website, soulofislamradio.com. And with that, may the peace, the mercy, the blessings, and the light of the Divine be upon you all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.